it's Graham here at Crestron. I have been asked many times, what screens am I using here on my background? Well, sorry to disappoint you, but they're not screens. They're actually feeds from NDI on um, using the new tech NDI plugin along with OBS and then sharing these three screens into my desktop here. So this is quite nice for remote demos or doing some uh, overviews like I do in, in my day job. So why don't I share how I do this with you? At first, you're going to need to download OBS, the latest version. You'll then need to install uh, NDI tools on your Microsoft Teams room. But just remember, this is for testing. It's not for production. I wouldn't recommend putting this on a production system. Not tried or tested it. It could add a lot of overhead. So this is purely for your lab purposes to have a play and do some remote demos and cool things like this i won't go into the ins and outs of how to set up obs there's lots of things you can do on there i am no expert there's plenty of other people out there but i'll show you how i've done it to make it quite simple uh you know i've taken a picture from our uh, gallery here at crashtron and then I've just placed these two images on the screen. So if I go like this, I can actually hide some images. I can turn them off and go to the stock image. And really, I've just added in three displays into this picture now. And it's real time. So if I go ahead and let's say I want to press a button on there. And I do this in a number of ways. I can do the remote application. Uh, I use um, like a remote desktop session into my devices so I can remotely control them from another device. Or what I can do is actually physically go and press a button. So if I lean over here and press present, you see it's ready to present. But if I was to do it on a virtual session and I used a DWS remote service, for example, you could use TeamViewer or, or any other application. Again, only for a lab, not in production. I could then go to my uh, system. And for example, now it is presenting. I can then bring up that screen. I am able to then press any buttons on the touch panel because ultimately the display is another touch panel and I can stop that. And then you can see that's refreshed. So I've got loads of things I can do here. It makes it nice and easy to do some remote demos. I don't have to lean over or stretch out. I can use a combination of my tools on my desktop and remotely viewing the screens. So let's see how it's all set up. So here we have my desktop, my Microsoft Teams room or MTR. What I'm using is this remote service to uh, see it. So here I have one of my screens and what I can do is go to display one. So you can see the front of room display and then I can go to extended display. So I could use this tool as my remote demo, but I think it's a little bit more effective and nicer putting it inside OBS. So you feel like you're inside the room. So what are the steps we need to do? So we need to install NDI tools first on this device. So we log into the Windows desktop side and we just need to download NDI tools. You'll need a, an email address to get the download link. Once we're signed in, we simply open up a browser and we can search for NDI tools download. Now this is, you can go to newtech.com. That'll take you straight there, obviously. So here you go, NDI tools. Click on there to get the tools. You can scroll down. NDI 5 is coming out, not just released just yet, but that'll be here soon. So we'll get 4.6. And obviously we're on Windows, so we select download. So you pop in your details here and you'll get an email straight away with the link in Blue Peter style. Here's one I made earlier. I have already downloaded it. And we'll now run this application. So we'll accept the agreement. And all we want to do here is actually screen capture. So we can just tick that. And that's actually all we need. Uh, we don't want anything else. Remember, we don't want to interrupt the system running. So we'll take off the webcam, VLC, and the drivers. All we want is that screen capture uh, application that will allow us to scrape it in OBS when we set OBS up. The other thing is we want this application to run all the time. So that means at startup and... Remember, if I look on this tray here, it's not started yet. I need to go to here 
go to my NDI tools and start up screen capture. Now you can look at some of the options. You can right click and you can see what frame rate for you are, for example. So I'm going to change it to uh, 25 frames per second. And what else do we have? Our region, our audio. I don't want audio. And obviously I don't want a webcam coming across. So it's just that simple. You don't even have to make that change on the frame rate, but you can do. The next thing we need to do for this to auto start is actually create a task. So when a user logs on, whether it's the admin user or the Skype user, I want to be able to run the, the task for NDI tools. So we will create a new task and we'll call it NDI tools. And the trigger for this is actually when someone logs on. Any user, we say OK. So we want it to log on regardless of the user. We want it to create an action of starting a program. And we go and find that program. And it's under uh, ckl and backslash program files, uh, new tech screen capture. And then we have the exe. And we say OK. The other thing you want to do is go to settings and disable this one here. Stop the task if it runs longer for three days because we want it always there. And probably the other thing we want to change is uh, the user account. Uh, obviously, we don't want admin running it. We want it to run with anyone. So for that purpose, we want to uh, run it with uh, a group. So anyone who's in the, um, the user group, so we could select individual users but it's nicer to do a user group so we say OK there and we say OK and again you can run that task and then that will be happy so now when I log off here as the admin and log back in as a Skype user it's going to start that uh, NDI screen capture service so that's it we're ready to go this device is ready to to go so we will we'll sign out now and we will sign back in as the Skype user and we will configure OBS to, to see this device. So we'll go back to Skype. And again, this is really important. Obviously, I'm logged on now. I've just done a sign out. Remember, every night at 2 a.m., the system restarts. So what happens there is it would not start that uh, screen capture service. Hence why we run the task scheduler uh, in here. So there we have the system ready to go. Now let's uh, jump over to OBS and see how we configure it there. So I've installed... OBS, so I've gone to the OBS project site, downloaded the uh, installation package. <clears throat> but I've also had to install the NDI uh, extension or the tools. So they are available to add on to your uh, NDI. I'll put the links in the uh, description below so you can grab them. So once you've got this installed, you can build what we call some scenes. And again, as I said in the opening, I'm no expert on this. This is some scenes I, I've got, I've set up. Um, so this is like an intro scene. I've got another scene where I do have my MTRs all set up. So this is what I started with. And what it's made up of is a number of different uh, applications or windows. And for example, I can turn my camera off and hide that and bring that back in. I can turn the banner off and you can see everything is laid out so what I've got I've also got uh, for example my zoom room demo so I've got uh, a system there so let's duplicate this so we can simply right click and uh, duplicate so we can start with a base and we're going to call this um, MX50 so this is our MTR uh, Microsoft Teams room that I have here what I want to do is delete some of the other things that aren't relevant and obviously I don't want these guys so now we have the camera I have my banner and I have my meeting room so that's just that wallpaper image now it's a lot bigger I've expanded it so I just see the screens closer up and it's like any application I've got layers so the higher up is what's on top so if I was to move the banner down you'd see I'm behind it for example you choose where you want to add things now to add my uh, system that I had the NDI tools in I click on the add button and I choose NDI source and let's call this the MX 50 dash now remember you can if you've got a single screen you can have one front of room screen and you're gonna have a second screen which is the center of room console so you may have two screens you may have three so we'll call this um, center of room COR let me say okay so now it's going to look on your network looking for the devices and I've got to remember which one it is I think it's one of these ones 
So I click on this one and what we will do is get a preview. So when we say OK, this window will appear on here now. So there we have the center room. So I guessed it right. Uh, it's the right console. And what I can do is then resize this and move this down here, for example. So you may want to think, OK, in my demos, I don't need that banner. So you could take that off because you want a bit more real estate. So you can put the center of room console down there. And I, you can use this little lock pad as well to lock things so they don't move around. So for example, uh, my camera, I want to unlock so I don't look, look like I'm floating in the air. And uh, we can put that in there. So I'm also using green screen here as well. Hence why you see me superimposed on here. So I've got a proper green screen behind me. So we lock that again so we don't accidentally move things around. And then if we add in the next source. So this will be the MX50-2. Oh, sorry, front of room. Now, I've only got one screen uh, configured on this uh, room system. I can have up to two. So what I could do is uh, obviously choose an appropriate image in the background. And let's just resize that and put that here. And really, it's just like any photo editing you might be used to. And you can use the control key, the alt key, etc. to crop and move. Because it's a single screen I, and I've got a dual screen image, so I can cheat and I can cut and paste this image. So I've got it twice. And there we have it. So now I want to move my camera above that, remember? So I'm in front of it. There we go. So now I'm over the top of that. As you can see, you can see a little bit of my green screen in the bottom corner, uh, just down, down there. So again, you want to maybe tidy this up. So I'll go to my camera, I'll unlock it, and I'll just crop this a little bit over. So I'll hold down the Alt key, and I can crop that across there. And why don't we put it at the edge of the system now? And then we'll lock that again. So now when I move across, you can see my green screen. Uh, you don't see it now, so it looks a little bit nicer. So as I mentioned, how do I control this now remotely? I can obviously lean over and press the touch panel, or I can bring up my virtual control uh, in my browser. So as you can see, it's now controlling it both. So again, if you've got two computers set up, you can easily do this and have that nice setup. And that's it. That's how we do demo like this and using our Microsoft Teams rooms or any other Zoom rooms, for example. Uh, I can do things with Android touch panels, but iPads, you just connect the feeds in and use some tools to access them. ADB is one of them, the ones on Android and iPad, I can mirror. So if I use my Mac, I'm actually on PC for this demo recording, but when I use my Mac, I can actually bring my iPad in there as well. So there's plenty of ways you can do demos with other tools and this is just a, a start and you know another thing i could do um nice feature here is that you can bring in a window capture so i could call this uh my remote control for example call it remote and i could say okay i want it to be microsoft edge and i want it to match the title um, and I want it explicit, so it's always going to be that title, and that will appear in there. So now I have <laughs> my remote control in here as well. So what I could do is just shrink this down a little bit. So basically, you've got your workspace here, and uh, again, what I can do, because maybe I don't want the headers. So again, I hold down the Alt key, and I just crop it here. And again, on the side, I could hold down the Alt key and crop, bring it in. So making it look quite nice. So instead actually of having that other control, I could put that down here. Or I could use it, uh, as I say, as another window here. Instead of the remote control, I'm actually using the browser. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. It's just you know how you do it is up to you. But the power of OBS is amazing and what you can do uh, you can actually record demos on here as well. I'm actually using Camtasia, which comes part of my MVP package. Thank you, Camtasia, or TechSmith, sorry. Uh, so you can use this for uh, actually recording in OBS as well and, and recording some uh, scenes, etc. But all my editing is done in TechSmith Camtasia. So I hope you found that useful. And remember to give me a like and subscribe. You'll hear some more great content when I have it available. See you soon. Thanks very much for watching. Ooh.